Welcome to another episode of Mondane Designs. I'm your host, Mondane. This video is part of my convention series, and this year in 2024, I went to Game Jam South. So last year, I went to Siege, mainly just to see Scott and Jen and have a lot of fun and meet a lot of other great people, and it was a lot of fun. But the year before that, I went to Game Jam South. Now, it was only one day back then, and it's come a long way since then. But it was mainly just used to dip my toe in it, in, in the conventions, to be honest, just to go and see if it's something that I wanted to get back into. And thankfully, everything at Game Jam South in 2022 was really a lot of fun and I had a great time and everything was very relaxing for me. I felt like I was in my element, but I'm going to let an expert explain what Game Jam South is. Hi guys, Game Jam South is a retro gaming expo and in its like truest form. So we are primarily, I say we got about 100 vendor, uh, vendor spaces, and I would say 90, 95% of those vendor spaces are mom and pop shops, collectors. It's gonna be retro video games. We do have some arcades that set up on free play and some retro game tournaments. This year, we are a qualifying location for the Master Chief World Championship. Whoever comes and wins will be qualified for the, the actual World Championships, which will be hosted at the Southeast Game Exchange this July, and so you'll get entered into that. We've got lots of panels going on all day. We've got the voices of Jill Valentine and Chris Redfield. They are awesome people, super, super nice. Joe White, who does Chris Redfield, has got some really cool Chris Redfield shirts that he's made, and he's signing the shirts. They look super cool. The lady who plays Jill Valentine, Heidi Anderson, she's like in, sort of in costume, and it's just, I don't know, it's just a whole cool theme, obviously. We've got the whole Resident Evil theme going on. We're just out here having a lot of fun. So that's kind of who we are, what we've got going on, all the social medias and website, and, and look for us next year. So one of the reasons I go to conventions is the people. I like to meet fellow gamers that absolutely enjoy the hobby as much as I do. And honestly, I really like meeting some of the YouTube personalities that I can run into. Uh, I've run into quite a few of them over the years now, and I've been exceedingly happy to do so. And it's one of the major reasons that I love showing up to these conventions. I get to meet like-minded people that share the same passion for video games that I have. And now at Game Jam South this year, I got to meet Phoenix Resale, Scott Squatch, Retro Wolf 88, and I finally got to meet Andy or Pac-Man Case as he is known, because I invaded the man's game room at, at Siege last year and he wasn't there. He just wasn't there. But good Lord, is that a tall, handsome man. <laughs> but it's great. I absolutely wanted to meet Andy so much and it was just really good to be able to sit there and talk with him for a while and kind of rib him a little bit, especially during his panel. I also got to meet Retro Gaming Pandemic again. I got to run into Saturn Steve again. I got to run into Retrobeard. Um, although he wasn't listed as a special guest, uh, Retrobeard, you are a special guest in my heart. I got to meet Arkansas Picker and he was very cool. We got to talk about drumming. I got to meet RNG Gamer. Wait a minute. RNG Gamer? He lives down the street from me. I can just get in my truck and go down there and, and, and then be in his game room. It only takes 30 minutes. Uh, I got to see Game On Network, although I didn't get a time to speak with him. He seemed rather busy that this weekend, but hopefully in the future we can speak and, and have a little bit of fun. I got to meet the flipping accountant at his booth. I got to help out a good friend, Gamer Aimer, with her, her booth and putting up the not for sale sign on all of those wonderful jackets and shirts and things like that. And it was just 
a lot of fun. It was really heartwarming to see so many people that are some of the bigger names in YouTube, well, bigger than me, come together and decide to support Game Jam South. That's very important to me, especially since I live in Alabama, and this is basically one of the only video game conventions that we have, or at least it's the largest one. And this year was the first year that they decided to do two days. And that's a big deal. That is a very large commitment. I'm so very happy that it was, from my point of view, as successful as it was. So I understand that going to these conventions, lots of people are going to hunt the newest and hottest thing, or at least what's on the rise for prices. And yes, everyone was there. Everyone was hunting Xbox 360. But like Lightsaber Samurai says, when everybody else zigs, you should zag. And guess what, folks? I zagged pretty hard. So I picked up mainly more modern things. And well, it's because my collection's fairly large and a lot of the systems I'm actually kind of done collecting for. But, Without further delay, let's go over what I picked up at Game Jam South this year. So the first up is Astral Ascend, uh, Astria Ascending. Goodness, got the name wrong. Uh, this looked very interesting. It's a JRPG and I, I'm, I'm just, I want it. I wanted to be able to pop this into a Switch. I think it, I only spent like 10 bucks on it. And, and, you know, for $10, getting a JRPG on the Switch, there's not much risk there. This next game, I picked it up because Scott and Jen and, and Dennis all said very nice things about this game. And I don't think they were just being nice Canadians. I believe that they were actually enjoying this game. That game is Trinity Trigger. Now, this game looks like a very good action RPG, and I think I picked it up for about 20 bucks. And it's one of those ones that I'm kind of waiting for the right moment to just dive deep into it and see what I can find. This next game got put on my radar by another good friend, Steve Craig of Steve Craig Retro. And I'm a fan of one of the series that this game is referencing. And Steve, I bet you right now you can guess which game I'm talking about. Yep, that's right, I'm still on the Switch. And this is Dead Cells Return to Castlevania Edition. And I love my Castlevania. And I've been playing this game and it's, it's really a lot of fun. I haven't deep dove into it. I just wanted to dip my toe into it and just to see if I wanted to invest more time into getting better at the game because make no bones about it, this thing does not pull any punches whatsoever. Then I went around and I went to all the different various booths and looked at all kinds of things and I found something that I would probably consider probably the best booth at uh, Game Jam South. And um, it's a booth that's actually run by a video game publisher. And the game that I picked up from them is Cathedral Exclusive Edition. Now, this is the, this is the edition that is only sold at conventions. And it comes with a little sleeve that pops out that looks like an NES uh, cartridge, or uh, sorry, an NES sleeve, dust sleeve. And it's premium, edi premium edition games. Goodness gracious, eventually I will learn how to talk. And this game looks great. It's a good Metroidvania classic thing, but on top of that, the CEO of Premium Edition Games was there, and his wife was there, who is the head of logistics. And 
I got them to sign my copy. There's his signature at the top and hers in the bottom in a little bit darker area, but that's quite okay. Now, one of the things that comes with this is a dog tag. That's kind of the only thing that you can really tell other than the outside box that this is the convention exclusive version of the game. And I'm very happy to have met the CEO of Premium Edition Games. And you know what? We talked for quite a while about video games. They've got some really good things on the horizon. And I'm telling you people, watch out because they're coming out with some really good games soon from some really big names in the industry. And I can't wait. Now, I didn't just stick to the Switch. I picked up a PS4 game. And that game is Summon Night 6. Now, this game is by Gaijin Works. I'm gonna let that sink in a little bit. Gaijin Works has something in common with one of my favorite publishers. That's right, Working Designs. What is that? Well, Victor Ireland. Victor Ireland is in charge of Gaijin Works, and he is in charge of my beloved working designs that is sadly no longer around. Well, there's some version of them around still, but I haven't seen them make any moves lately. But I saw a Gaijin Works game and I had to have it. Now this year in 2024, there have been, there's a small list of three games that I didn't pick up on release date that I kind of regretted not picking up. Now, I didn't want to pay full price on them because I knew eventually they would drop in price. And you know, a penny saved is a penny earned. One of the games I got before this, the Game Jam South convention. Now, this game is Armored Core 6. I am a big Armored Core fan. I absolutely love the series. I love being able to build the mechs. And this game also does not pull any punches. The next game I picked up was, again, on my radar of the, num of the top three games that I was going to hunt down for a fairly cheap price. Uh, at the convention, and this one is Spider-Man 2, uh, which edition is this? Launch edition. Um, and yes, I was missing Spider-Man 2. I was missing out, and I didn't want to miss out any longer. Then I picked up this one. Star Wars Jedi Survivor. Yes. I was missing this game. And I know, Brandon, I know, I know that it's one of your favorites. And to hear you talk about it made me push this up on my schedule to pick it up. And I paid around $30 for it, which is about $5 more than I wanted to pay. But you know what? You made it sound so good that I just had to get it. Uh, then, one of the vendors threw something in because I was kind of a nice guy and I showed up with those little cheese prepackaged cheese crackers and was giving them out to people that looked a little hungry. And so I got the Super Mario RPG pin set from the Switch release. It's a very nice pin set. I'm very happy with how everything looks with it. And it's something he didn't have to do. Um, I think it was just kindness for paying kindness. But again, thank you so much. Finally, I picked up a double. I know I made a mistake and I wasn't really paying attention too much to all of the things that I was picking up. And I didn't look in my Game Eye app and I didn't realize that I already had this on the PlayStation 4 but it is Bloodstained Curse of the Moon 2. Now, thankfully, this is a limited run game and that it's already, that it is still sealed, brand new. 
So I don't think I'm gonna have a hard time getting rid of this game or trading it away or finding it a very good home. But that's all of the video games I picked up. But that's not all that I picked up. Some of you may know from some of the tours that I've had in my video game room, specifically Retro Wolf and his channel, that I like movies. And more specifically, I like older stranger formats of movies. Now I don't have a beta, but I do have VHS and I have DVD and I have Laserdisc. And I saw a Laserdisc there that I wanted and I had to haggle for the price a little bit, but the vendor was extraordinarily nice to me and eventually gave this to me for a little over five bucks. And it is Lawnmower Man. I loved this movie as a kid. It got me into technology and what technology could possibly do and just the dream of it. And yeah, I mean, it's beautiful. It is, it is the two disc edition. So um, I'm, I'm very excited to be able to add this to the Laserdisc collection. And I'm so very, very thankful for being able to pick it up. But that's it. That's all I picked up at Game Jam South. Um, I got to spend time with friends. I got to hunt for video games. I mean, it's, it's really, really just a very, very good experience. And I cannot suggest it enough. Let me tell you about a game that released in April of 2017 that I only learned about in 2018 and thought that I would never get to play it. Now, I know that every once in a while, conventions decide to host arcade machines that are set to free play. And while they didn't have quite a few of them at Game Jam South, Starlight Pinball Arcade came to the rescue and brought a handful of machines. Now, there's this one game, again, it released in April of 2017, its developer is Blast City Studios, and its publisher is Griffin Aerotech. I had a huge amount of FOMO for this game, and I thought I was never going to get to play it because the closest one to me was over 250 miles away. But again, Starlight Pinball Arcade in Huntsville, Alabama came to my rescue because I didn't know they had it until I saw it at Game Jam South this year. They had a cabinet of Sky Cursor. Sky Cursor is this wonderful schmuck that yes, I realize that the FOMO is kind of giving me rose colored glasses, but I've been wanting to play this game for a while and I thought I was never gonna get to play it. It's a shmup. It's a little over the top. It's very tongue in cheek. It's a little bit gory and has eyeballs that fly around. And there's a skull with a, with a rocket, you know, sticking out of its head. And I mean, it's, it's, it's very tongue in cheek. Um, but I enjoyed the game quite a bit. I know that it's not a top tier shmup, but honestly, this arcade cabinet is currently the only way you can play the game. I'm hoping further down the line that the developer and publisher will see the light of day and that they will decide to release this game on home console or Steam or some way that they can at least spread this game out a little bit more and let more people enjoy it. And I got to enjoy it quite a bit. In fact, I got to play all of it that I could. The games were set to free play and I actually beat the game. Now, I'll admit that I credit fed my way through the game because I didn't have enough time to 
learn the patterns and figure out all the mechanics of the game 100%, but being able to play a game that I thought I was never going to see ever in my lifetime was just a really good experience and another reason to show up to these conventions. So, would I suggest going to Game Jam South? Absolutely. I would suggest going to any convention. Start small. Just see if it's something you can be comfortable with. And then if it is something you're comfortable with, explore out. Who knows, you might just make some new friends. Well, that's it for this episode of Mondane Designs. I'm your host, Mondane, and I hope you enjoyed this episode as much as I enjoyed making it. I have videos on the 1st and 15th of every month and look forward to sharing them with you. As always, please like, comment, and subscribe, and have a wonderful day.